Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics Calculus Mechanics. This is the 2019 AP Physics C exam number one. Again, this is for mechanics. We're going to be taking a look at each one of these problems in the 2019 exam, and this is the first one. So let's get to it. You can see what's happening here in this experiment. A, a student is using video analysis. We have a mass of 12 grams. Now think about that. We always want to put that in kilograms, 0 0.0. 1, 2 kilograms, and it the student is dropping it. It's going to be going down, 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 down. Hopefully, we're going to get close to hitting what's called terminal velocity. And so uh, they give us a graph of data here. And remember, this is a velocity time graph. It's graphing the velocity of the object. And the first thing it says is, does the speed of the object increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, the speed starts at zero, then speed goes up, and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And so the speed is increasing. And that is worth one point for saying the speed is going to be increasing. Then it says, in a brief statement, describe the direction of the object's acceleration. Now, how do I find acceleration from a velocity time graph? I look at the slopes. So you look at the slope here, you look at the slope here, you look at the slope here. What's happening to the slopes of the lines? The slopes of the lines is getting less and less and less. And so they first they want to know the direction of the acceleration. Now the direction is downward. Okay, that's worth one point for saying downward. Okay. And then it says how has the magnitude how has the number of the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration changed? The magnitude is decreasing and why is the magnitude decreasing well the slopes of the of the VT graph the slopes are getting less and less and less and less and so that is worth uh, two points right there one point for saying downward one point for saying the slope is getting less and less and less now take a look at number three. Number three says we want to calculate an approximate value for the magnitude of the acceleration at exactly this point two seconds. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to take a look at the slope of the line, the best slope that I can get at this point. And so you can see I took a look at two points here. I took a look at this point right here at uh, what we call f of 0.23 and this or v of 0.23. So the velocity at 0.23, I'm going to say, is equal to 0.8 meters per second. And the velocity at this point right here, I, you can see I use 0 0.185. The velocity at 0 0.185 is equal to, you can see it's equal to exactly 0.7 meters per second. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to take the slope of that line. I'm going to take 0.8 minus 0.7. 0.23 minus 0.185 and I get 2.2 meters per second squared for number three and that was worth two points one point for taking a look at each one of the slopes uh, each, each point for developing the slopes of the line and one point for uh, approximately 2.2 meters per second squared obviously there's a little bit of wiggle room so a1 was worth one point a2 is worth two points for downward and that magnitude is decreasing because the slopes are getting less a3 is worth two points one point for setting up the slope equation one point for the acceleration the average acceleration okay so let's get to the real calculus part of this and we're taking a look at uh, B1 and B2, and they give us a function. It's a nonlinear function. They give us what the constants A are and what the constants B are. And the first thing they said is, and remember this is a velocity function, we want to know the vertical displacement. So what am I going to do to find the displacement is, I have velocity as a function of time is equals 1.18 times 1 minus e to negative 5t. Uh, I can distribute if I want. I don't have to. 1.18 minus 1.18e to the negative 5t. And what am I going to do in order to, uh, to, to find the vertical displacement? Well, velocity is the vertical displacement. Okay, I'll keep this in blue right here. The vertical displacement. So I'm going to say the, the change in the y, dy, over dt. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the integral of this which means that it's like I have a differential equation. I multiply this dt out here, 
Okay, and what do you know we have? We have this set up for an integral, an integral. And of course we're going from time zero to time t for this integral. So what do we get? What's the integral of dy is just y as a function of t. And I'm going to take this guy right here. What's the integral of 1.18 with respect to t is 1.18t. What's the integral here is minus 1.18 divided by negative 5. The integral of e to the 5t is e to the negative 5t. And that is going from 0 to t, which means y is a function of t. I plug in t, I get 1.18t minus, well actually it's plus because these two minuses cancel out, and I get 0.236 e to the negative 5t. Remember you can do this all with variables. I did it with some numbers, it doesn't matter. And minus, that's using the t, the upper limit of the function, and then we're going to plug in zeros. This zero becomes zero, but this e to the zero power is one, so it's minus point two, three, six. Okay, that's worth three points. Uh, one point for setting up your integral, one point for doing the integral, and one point for simplifying it. Uh, obviously there is some different um, different looks at what it looks like. It could be in variable form, could be a more in variable form than number form, uh, but that is worth three points. Okay, let's go to number two. Number two says derive an expression for the magnitude of net force. What do we know about net force? Net force equals mass times acceleration. What do we know about acceleration? It's the change of velocity over change in time. Guess what I have? I have a mass. I know it's 0 0.012 kilograms. And I can take the derivative of this function of 1.18 minus 1.18 e to the negative 5t. And I'm just going to take the derivative of that. So the net force is equal to um, 0 0.012. I'll keep that right there. What's the derivative of 1.18? It's 0, isn't it? What's the derivative of this function right here? We have negative 1.18. We have to multiply because of the product rule. Multiply by negative 5. e to the negative 5t. Okay. And so... I can simplify all of this and we end up getting 0 0.0708 e to the negative 5t. Again, this problem number two is worth three points. One point for setting up the derivative of mass times the change of velocity over change in time. One point for doing the derivative and one point for cleaning that bad boy up. So B1 is worth three points. B2, B2 is worth three points. And we go to the end of this problem right here. Uh, as we go to the end of the problem, you can see it says the student repeats the experiment with a taller glass cylinder with the same fluid. But the cylinder is tall enough that the object reach, reaches constant speed, or what we like to call terminal velocity. Okay, So n C1 is saying determine the constant speed of the object. Well, it's hitting terminal velocity. Remember what was my function? It was V of t equals 1.18, 1 minus e to the negative 5t. And what do we know as it's going? The time is approaching infinity, isn't it? And as time approaches infinity, e to the negative 5t, the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the 5t equals 0, which means this whole thing becomes 0. He becomes 0 which means what is the velocity, the terminal velocity is 1.18 meters per second, or what you would call that variable A, right there. Um, this is worth two points. One point for understanding that when we hit go towards terminal velocity, terminal velocity is when the limit as t approaches infinity of your velocity function, that was worth one point, one point for your answer of the velocity is equal to 1.18 meters per second for that terminal velocity. The last part of the problem is number two. It says determine the force exerted by the fluid. Well, we know the net force is equal to zero. 
why is the net force equal to zero? Well, it equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration is equal to zero as we go towards terminal velocity, as we hit terminal velocity. The acceleration is equal to zero, which means that the force of the resistance of the fluid, resistance of the fluid, must be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. And that is worth two points. Uh, one point for understanding that the net force is equal to zero, and one point for understanding that the, um, oh, sorry, and one point for understanding that the force of resistance is going to be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So let's review our 15 points on this problem. You can see one point for A1, two points for A2 for downward and the ma mag magnitude is decreasing. Uh, number three is worth two points, one for setting up the slope, one for calculating the slope. Uh, B1 is worth three points, one for setting up the integral, one for doing the integral, one for cleaning it up. B2 is worth three points, one for setting up the derivative, one for doing the derivative, one point for cleaning it up. And then C1 is worth two points, one point for the time approaching infinity, and the terminal velocity is worth one point. And C2 is worth two points, one point for the net force is equal to zero and 1.4. The resistance is equal to opposite to gravity. That was 2019 AP Physics Calculus Mechanics exam problem number one. Make sure you put your answers or your scores in MrRaden.com so I can see how you did. Any questions, make sure you let me know and I uh, hope this helped. See you guys. Bye.